there is something that is very troubling to me, very, very troubling. And uh, if I were being smart, if someone said that to me, I'd say, oh, only one thing, I've got more than that. However, the truth is there is something very troubling to me. And that is there are a lot of pretend Christians out there. And I dare say, in a sense, I was one of them at one time. The Lord showed me the difference, the difference between what it really meant to live for him, to really be his, and to just say that I was. He took me into the truth of his word, and I held up my actions to the word of God. And I couldn't believe the hypocrisy I saw in myself. I was so grieved. I was comfortable, and I was happy. Didn't think I was so bad. I was horrible. I was a horrible, horrible person. That's because I finally came to understand what the scripture says. We are sinners and separated from God. But we have come here to this end of time. In the book of Daniel, it says it's a time when the transgressors have come to the full. Things are just worse and worse. Uh, I think it says in 2 Timothy 3, evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. It has said in 2 Peter chapter 2, that false teachers will arise. With, they will, by covetousness, with, feigned, merch, with uh, feigned words, make merchandise of you. They will turn away people that were, had been clean escaped from those that live in error, and they will turn back into error. So this is a dangerous time in history. But I have looked for over time, since it is this dangerous time, and I saw the end. I saw the moral collapse of the U.S. and the world. I could see the plans of world government coming into place and whatnot. But you know, there are very, very few that will be saved in the end. And that very few is certainly lesser than 5%. And probably at the very end, probably less than half of 1% at the very end. That would be after the tribulation, just before the Lord returns. Those are just guesses. The Bible doesn't, doesn't say that dogmatically anywhere. So please bear with me in my opinion. I can tell you why I, have, I do have reasons for that. However, I won't get into that at this time. When we read in the scripture, we see it is time to repent. It is time to repent of our sins and turn to the Lord. We recognize our separation from God. And that only Jesus Christ, by his death on the cross, can reconcile, can reconcile us to God the Father. When we see ourselves in that light, when Jesus was on the cross, God poured out his wrath upon his son. This was God's justice, and he took it for us in our place. But I tell you today, people don't care about that. This is what I'm seeing all around me. If it's not like this where you are, Please bear with me. The Lord told me to do this video for the things I am dealing with. And what I am seeing is, it's a part of this prosperity gospel. They're trying to take. All they do is try to take from God. They're trying to take eternal life. They're trying to take a security in heaven, but they will not give him their lives. Ever. They have no intention of making Jesus their Lord. They wouldn't do that. They think God just wants to shower them with all their gifts. No. The scripture says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things pass away, and behold, all things become new. We love the Lord. We love him for giving his life for us so that we can have eternal life instead of eternal damnation. It's precious. But people today don't see it. They don't give the lordship of their lives to Jesus. It's not automatic. You have to give it to him and depend on him every day. Jesus told his disciples, I am the vine and ye are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Nothing. Salvation is of the Lord. All of our best efforts are not going to make a difference. So day in and day out, my wife and I have learned we need the Lord. When we get up in the morning, we come to the Lord. We need him. We don't want to face a day without him. We don't want to face any time without him. And I dare say we are still far from perfect. But there are so many, they get up, they do their lives. They never open their Bible. They don't pray. They just go about their business. 
Jesus is not the Lord of their lives. They have not been a transformed life in Christ. They have not turned. They have not fully repented at all. Because then they would go from a life of sin and selfishness to a life that hates sin, that has left sin, and seeks to please God. It is about that simple, and I don't see it. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, but you do not the things that I say? We see the example of Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter 5, remember? The disciples were all staying together. They were all in one accord. People were selling lands and houses and giving the money to the disciples, not for them, but they were dividing to people as they had need. And so Ananias and Sapphira came. And they sold their land or, or house or whatever, whatever it was. But they held back on the price. And they declared to the disciples that the price they sold it for was less than what they really did so that they could have part of it. And I dare say this is exactly what people are doing today. It's like they have looked at Christianity and they're crossing their T's and dotting their I's. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know that. Check mark. I know that. Check mark. Oh, sure, that's okay, check mark. But it doesn't make any difference in their lives. We are to pray without ceasing. We are to cast all of our care upon him. We are to be utterly dependent upon Jesus. God wants the relationship. He wants the relationship. And what we're trying to do, what I see so many trying to do, they're trying to take salvation as that gift, but just go on with their lives exactly the way they want to do it. They think themselves to be good people. God loves me. Hey, it's all right. They have never repented. There are There is no fruit worthy of repentance. You know, there's got to be fruit. If you look at the example in Luke 19, with the wee little man, anyway, that's how the Bible school songs present the wee little man, Zacchaeus, you will see. Zacchaeus repented. Do you remember when he stood, he said, Lord, half of my goods I give to the poor. If I have taken anything from a man by false accusation, I will restore him fourfold. And Jesus said, this day salvation has come into this house. He, is all, he also is a son of Abraham. That's repentance. It makes a difference in your life. You start living for the Lord. You put aside the love of this world. We are here in Kazangula, Botswana, and we have churches everywhere. Kazangula, Kasani, there are churches everywhere. And I tell you, <laughs> well, maybe I don't want to tell you that. But they are, they are lost. They are lost. You can see it by their fruit. And they're just trying to get by. Someone has told him, okay, you acknowledge God. Okay, you acknowledge Jesus. Okay, you say the Bible is your everything, but especially go to church and put money in your offer in the offering. And now everything for sure is, is a-okay. Other than that, just do the best you can. No, Jesus is the, is the Lord of everything all the time. We depend on him. He is that close. He is the friend that stays closer than a brother. The years have separated me from friends. I wish I could say that, it said that I was separated because I was such a good Christian. That's not how it started out. and That's not how the separation started out. I believe God has used it for the good. But by doing this, I have come to rely so much on God and his presence as a friend. And sometimes I feel horrible because he is the righteous God of the universe. And I have this corrupt vessel and I have to bring to him all of my corruption. Say, God, I'm struggling so much. I shouldn't even bring this to you. Because you're so holy. But I have no one else to go to. That's the kind of relationship we need with the Lord. Such a dependence. And stop depending on ourselves. Don't you see? Jesus rose up a great while before it was day. He went out and prayed. He departs into a mountain alone and he prays. 
He is God incarnate. Do you think he really needed to do that as God incarnate? No, he was showing us an example to follow. Why do we go about our entire days and pay no attention to the God we need so desperately? So desperately. I'm looking over some of these notes, some of these scriptures, and it's just incredible. Jesus said, if any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. He said, consider the cost of building a tower. Make sure you have enough to finish. What about the, the ten virgins? Five were wise and five were foolish. Do you have enough oil in your lamps to wait for the bridegroom? Are you living for your life in this world instead of living your life for the one who gave his life for you? Are you studying the Bible to say, what does the Bible say about my life? He says, he that does truth comes into the light, that his deeds will be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Are you doing that? Well, you figure God is just going to honor you for doing the best you can. And you never even went to him. He is not your Lord automatically. If you love him, you will go to him. You will seek him. And he wants you to. He's not going to blast you. Why didn't you do this sooner? Huh? Why didn't you do? No. Remember. He stands at the door and knocks. Please invite Jesus into your life. Repent of your sins to the full and make him the Lord of your life. Cling to him and his righteousness. Yours will never do it. I implore you to put away these games and find real salvation. Find that true relationship with your creator that he has always wanted. I hope that God blesses this message to you or to someone you love. Have a good day in Christ.